Okay. Hello, everybody. It is Tuesday, September 6th, and welcome to Defying Expectations Over 60. So we've changed the orientation of the program. It's not just Defying Expectations, although we'll still have a few episodes of that. But I really want to um, spotlight men and women over 60 who are changing the world and uh, defying expectations while doing so. Um, so many of us, um, I, I'm 63, and they kind of expect us, so society expects you to retire. I know my friends and my family have expected me to retire. And um, I just didn't feel like I was done yet. And I want to introduce you to my friend, Gail Weber, who is uh, also defying expectations over 60. Gail, why don't you introduce yourself? Ah, oh, thank you, Suki. I'm so happy to be with you. I actually did a first big change in when I was 60, and I shifted to become an executive and a life coach. I've done that for over 20 years, um, loving to, to work with smart, successful, savvy people, but who were struggling, who had strife, who were dissatisfied. They didn't know what to do, where to go. A lot of times their struggles were professional. Sometimes they were personal, but most of the time they were both. I bet you're finding that with people too. I certainly am. I, I, I think that, you know, a lot of the times how we do anything is how we do everything. Mm -hmm. And the same kinds of issues that come up into play in your professional life are going to come into your, into play in your personal life too. I absolutely love that. Mm -hmm that statement that you made how how we do anything is how we do everything is how we do everything i love that that's yeah thank yeah. you <laughs> yep so um you've got something big going on now first of all um tell the people that are watching how old you are because it is uh startling <laughs> um my last birthday which was in november i turned 80 yeah. Isn't that crazy? Um, I, I find the numbers over a certain age are, they're just dumb. They don't mean anything anymore, you know? You bet. And um, the fact that, you know, I intend to keep going while my energy holds up uh, until I'm not having fun anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I would like to be 80 or 80 plus when I, um, you know, doing more great things in the world. Yeah. So indeed. now you've got a big project going on, right? I do. And the, to your point, things that we thought about doing when we were 50 or 60 or 70 uh, may not have even been on the playing field for us. Um, and now they are. And yeah. what I'm doing is, and, and I've had this in the back of my mind for so long. Um, I've, I've wanted to write multiple books, but my goodness, Time's going by so fast. And so I'm focusing on the one of those three or four books that I think is most important. And oh gosh, maybe I'll get a big energetic push and <laughs> do all three or four of them. But my focus right now is on love. On love. Okay. And so it's not, it's not erotic love. It's not, it's not Eros. <laughs> right. It is, um, I think we would, but we would most recognize it as agape, but it's so much, to me, it's so much broader and it is so much uh, deeper than that. Well, tell me, so tell folks who are watching what agape means and then, um, and then tell me a little bit more about that book. Um, well, agape is, is typically re, um, used to refer to, like spiritual love or Christian love, or okay. mm -hmm. it's, it's doing good for people. It's um, okay. So it's like, lo as I would say, like loving on people. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. In, in and, and again, I want to stress that it's so much broader and deeper than that. Mm -hmm. I've, I, I was introduced to a, not literally, but to a Nobel Prize winning economist. And almost mm -hmm. anyone who has gone, taken an econ class 
in college probably had his textbook, even those of us who are 80. <laughs> <laughs> and his name's Paul Samuelson. And I pulled one of my favorite little books about him um, mm -hmm. out. It's, it's called um, there we Economic go. from the Heart. Interesting. And the story about him that really uh, put a lot of energy into what I want to do was when he said that his textbook publisher would not allow him to use the word, put the word love in his index. Really? Yes. And it just really struck a chord for me, Suki, because um, <clears throat> it, it was telling in how seemingly inappropriate it is for us to deal with or address or care about people outside of whatever they're doing for their work, making widgets or whatever that work is. Right, right. So he has inspired me to, at times when I wanted to give up, I'm inspired by this economist who who lived a long life. I think he was in his 90s when he died. Golly. And, and he keeps pushing on me to write this. But the concept is becoming very interesting. There's, um, there's a book called Love as a Business Strategy. So oh, I like that. Isn't that great? Um, it, it has so many implications. I mean, um, one of the things that uh, bothers me about our current time is that I feel like uh, capitalism is kind of toxic, it, not altogether, um, you know, unnecessary or, or, or something not to be... It's not altogether terrible, but um, without the concept of love and doing good for the people that work for you and the people that are in your orbit that you influence on a regular basis, then, you know, what are we doing for? It's just money for money's sake, right? That's right. It's greed. It's, it's toxic is such a perfect word. Mm. it's really it is bad i'm gonna hold this up just in case okay. anybody wants to let's see love as a business strategy okay great there we go i'm gonna get it just right okay. who's and the it, author on that um it's a group actually okay uh, the first author's last name is anwar a-n-w-a-r okay Mm -hmm. And I can definitely send you the whole contact information and maybe you will want to put oh, just it the link. Up. Yeah. And then we'll put it in the, in the, um, the comments on the post. So it's, um, and, and he actually came to this because a college football coach from his alma mater was using love as a game strategy. Wow. And so that it's a beautiful story. It's a powerful story and it is so inspiring and it's so current. So I'm thrilled to see that other people are beginning to find what I'm talking about, what you're talking about, and they're giving us words to, in, to start. Sometimes it's vocabulary, it. right? You've got to, yeah, you've got to have words and uh, common words so that you can express what you're, what you're thinking and talking about and other people will understand you. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's the name of your book? Do you, have you started it? I, I have sort of started it. I have a lot of research done, which is what us wannabe writers often do. We yeah. research and research. Well, I, that's been a lot of where I am. Uh, the title, I think, will be What is Love Anyways? What is Love Anyways? Wow. <laughs> now that's a big subject. That's not, um, it isn't grammatically correct, and I may change my mind. <laughs> But it's actually, um, I'm, it's actually a quote for some, uh, from someone who had just told me a few weeks before, um, he said, 
I said, there are things that we do for love. And at that time, I was taking care of my mother. There are things we do for love. And he said, hmm, love just means having to kiss somebody's ass. Oh, interesting. Because his interpretation of love was nothing more than erotic love. Hmm. Hmm. And, and I would say probably not even erotic love, but it was just sex, raw sex. That's what yeah. I mean. Hmm. So I'd, I want to broaden that conversation, that definition. Right. And so it's like, it's like love in the workplace and school and. Like- yes. Yes. We can be so cruel to one another. Mm-hmm. And of course, in the, and I don't want to get political, but I do want to point out, if I might, that the, um, the political environment in our country the last few years that has been, that has caused so much division. Very polarized, yes. We're, we are so polarized, and, and um, I think love will do a whole bunch of um, good stuff for finding points. I mean, maybe we're neither one of us lo- uh, uh, wrong, but let's don't just go for hate. <laughs> right, right, right. So, well, it sounds like a very interesting book. Um, you may find when you're writing, you say you you believe you've got a bunch of books in you. Uh, you may find when you're writing that once the first one's done, that it's easier to write the second one. You might get them all just cranked out in a matter of a couple Wouldn't of years. That be wonderful, right? <laughs> uh, awesome. Because I kind of intend to be very old. I, you know, I, I'm right. I'm still not very old. Yes, no, you're not very very old. old. (laughs) Look at you. You've got tons of energy. You've got plenty of things to look forward to. You've got plenty of things to um, get you out of bed in the morning. And um, it's very inspirational. So um, I'm so glad you agreed to come on and be interviewed today. Oh, thank you. It is an honor, Suki. It's an honor that (laughs) this challenge of opening up our conversations about the ways people experience love and the ways they may be missing out or they may know things that other people need to know. Yes. I agree. I have, I've had so many conversations over the last few years about, um, well, what I mean to say is I have learned so much from the conversations that I've had from other people, you know, uh, they all make me think, And like you said, even if you disagree with somebody, often they've got really good points to make and, um, you know, and uh, it'll open up the way you think about something. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's great. And if your book about love is a conversation starter, then um, I know we'll all be the richer for it. I, I absolutely hope so. (laughs) <laughs> and I well, think Gail, it will. <laughs> I think it will too. And I can't wait to read it. And I'm so glad that you um, were here with me today on Defying mm-hmm. Expectations Over 60. I celebrate you. I um, I want to be you. I aspire to be you in a oh few my. years. <laughs> yes. And who knows? You'll be a bigger, a bigger version. I'm positive. I'm positive. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Yes. So thank, thanks for being with me. And we will put um, yep, the books that you mentioned. We'll put a link to them in the comments and I'll put Gail's um, contact information if you want to get a hold of her. And um, again, Gail, thank you so much for being on Defying Expectations Over 60. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be with you. Thanks, Gail.